We must see God's zeal who said, Be holy, because I am holy. Your God is holy. I am the Lord who makes them holy. I am the Lord your God, who has distinguished you from all nations. I am the Lord your God. The Eternal and Unchanging Word of God One Story One Story 21 Offerings, sacrifices, priests, and holiness. Leviticus chapter 1 to chapter 22. Now we enter Leviticus. Leviticus is a difficult and hard Bible book for those who have read the Bible enough to call it my crisis. But it is neither difficult nor complicated if you look at it from the perspective of one story, focusing on what is consistently being said. God's love for God's people the relationship between God and God's people, and the restoration of that relationship through Jesus Christ. This is because God is constantly without change telling the story. In Leviticus, God proclaims, I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy, because I am holy, and talks about the holiness of God's people. In Exodus, God's people were saved and established as a priest's country and as holy people. Now, in Leviticus, God is showing how Israel can live as a priestly nation and as holy people in fellowship with God. Therefore, Leviticus is a book that contains God's zeal to make God's people holy. The Israelites had to be distinguished from from other nations to God in order for God's people to live a life that walks with God. They must remove the sins that separate them from God. So being holy means distinguished and separated. They had to be distinguished from the gods and idols of other nations to God. Offering those who offered gifts to God offered cows, sheep, gods, or pigeons, according to circumstances and even grains according to the types of sacrifice. However, the offering must have no flow. This applied to all sacrifices of burnt offerings, fellowship offering, sin offering, and guilt offering, and grain offerings had to be in fine flour. Sacrificing with flawless offerings was not just a matter of the sacrifice but a matter of heart. Oil and blood from the offering should never be eaten. In addition, yeast and honey could not be added to the offering, and the salt of the covenant must be included. But God lamented and said of the offerings of the sacrifices by God's people, a son honors his father, and a slave his master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? It is you, priest, who show contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we defiled you? By saying that the Lord's table is contemptible. When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice lame or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you? Sacrifice there were five types of sacrifices. Among them, except for the grain offerings, the burnt offering, fellowship offerings, guilt offerings, and sin offerings had some differences. But all of them were mainly cows, sheep, and goats, offering that were burnt. The person offering the sacrifice had to place his hand on the offering's head, handing over the skin, then killing the offering, taking its blood, sprinkling it on all sides of the burnt altar, skinning the offering, cutting it into pieces and burning the pieces, head, and fat with the intestines and legs. The biggest meaning of the sacrifice is ransom. The shape is different, but the sin of the person giving the sacrifice is passed on to the sacrifice, and instead of the person giving the sacrifice who has to pay the penalty, the offering becomes a sacrifice, and the person receives atonement. The sacrifice of the atonement was like a device for forgiveness of sins that were not intentionally committed. However, the Israelites repeated their sins and sacrifices. Confession and will to stop committing sins repeatedly no longer existed and the sacrifice became a part of their formal everyday life. So God lamented and said this about the people's sacrifices. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me? I have more than enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fat and animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked Ask this of you, this trampling of my courts. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. From offerings and sacrifices to priests.
Before the tabernacle was built and Aaron and his descendants were established as priests, God's people such as Cain and Abel, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob offered the sacrifices themselves. Therefore, the more important thing than the offerings and sacrifices was the person who offered the sacrifice. This is because choosing a sacrifice with no flow, the time, method, and procedure of offering a sacrifice were all decided and controlled by the priest. That is why God God did not say that he received Abel's sacrifice during Cain and Abel's first sacrifice, but that he received Abel and his offering. Likewise, he did not say that he did not receive Cain's offering, but that he did not receive Cain and his offering. However, after the place to offer sacrifices, the tabernacle was built and priests who presided over the sacrifices were chosen. The priests took over that important role. Priests. After the tabernacle was built, it was the priest who presided over the sacrifice to the flawless offerings. Just as the sacrifice had to be flawless, the priest also had to be flawless. That is why God said to Moses, Then dress Aaron in the sacred garments, anoint him, and consecrate him, so he may serve me as priest. Bring his son and dress them in tunics. Anoint them just as you anointed their father, so they may serve me as priests. Their anointing will be to a priesthood that will continue throughout their generations. But they were neither holy nor perfect and they had faults. Adam, the first high priest, created the calf idol and Nadab and Abihu who had to take full responsibility for the high priesthood as Adam's first son and second son died by God's attack when they used unauthorized fire for the burnt altar. Also in later generations there were priests Eli and his sons Hophni and Phinehas who despised the sacrifices of God. The first sacrifice that Adam gave after being appointed as a priest was a flawless offering like God commanded Moses and God received the killed offering, burnt offering and fellowship offering. But immediately after that the sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu committed a sin. In the books of prophet it is pointed out that the priests ruled with power, committed falsehood, were evil, taught for benefit, defiled the sanctuary and violated the law and despised God's name. Jesus Christ, the perfect offering, sacrifice, and priest. The offerings and sacrifices were not perfect. The priest was not perfect either. So Jesus Christ came as the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, and became the perfect priest himself on the altar of the cross, offering himself as a complete sacrifice to atone for the sins of the world. The Bible says sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you do not desire, not were pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, Here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time on sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. The Bible also proclaimed, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. And this shows the worship life of those who became children of God through the very same Jesus Christ. Clean animal and unclean animal. God distinguishes and tells between what is clean and unclean, what can be eaten and what cannot be eaten. And he says, I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourself and be holy, because I am holy. Do not make yourself unclean by any creature that moves along the ground. I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy, because I am holy. In Leviticus, the distinction between the clean and unclean animals was to distinguish the lives of the people. Like God gave the law of fairness to his people when the rest of the nation had the eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth laws. God gave them a distinction for food that the rest of the nations used without distinction, even when serving their gods. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul proclaimed,
names. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat and no better if we do. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Therefore, it is not a matter of food itself but a matter of a distinguished life. The food did not make them holy, but obedience distinguished them. The priest will choose him. What is more important than offerings and sacrifices are those who offer the sacrifices and those who supervise sacrifices. Therefore, if the priest is perfect, both the offering and the sacrifice can be perfect. Leviticus now passes the priest ordinance, priest appointment, and the priest first sacrifice, moves on to the clean and unclean animals, and goes on with the stories of the priest who decide the purification for a woman after childbirth and cleanness of a skin disease. The priest can examine the disease of the skin and pronounce it clean or unclean. If the priest pronounces it as clean, it is clean. And if he pronounces it to be unclean, it is unclean. When the priest atoned, he was forgiven. We will be forgiven by Jesus Christ who will come like such a perfect priest. Whether the woman who gave birth to a child is clean or not is about original sin. And the skin disease that occurs during their life is due to their deed sin. So it can be purified to the priest priest, the perfect priest, Jesus Christ. This is what the Lord commanded. God commands not only the priest but also to all the descendants of Israel through Moses. Any Israelite who catches a cow, sheep or goat inside the camp or outside must first bring the animal to the tent of meeting and offer it as an offering to God in front of the tabernacle. Otherwise they will be cut off from the people. Even if the animal is caught from the field, the offering must be brought to the tabernacle door and given to the priest to be sacrificed to God as a fellowship offering. God commanded all sacrifices to be done in front of the tabernacle because although the body of the Israelites came out of Egypt, their lifestyle still had the conscience of the old sacrificing ritual they obscenely did. God also repeatedly tells the people not to eat any blood and this is because the life of the flesh is in the blood and to tell them to leave the custom of the Gentile sacrifice that drinks the blood of the beast after the sacrifice. Therefore now God's people are told to hold Holy serve God only. I am the Lord your God. God again said through Moses, I am the Lord your God. He said, Therefore, you must not do as they do in Egypt, where you used to live, and you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. Do not follow their practices. You must obey my laws and be careful to follow my decrees. I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and laws, for the person who obeys them will live by them. I am the Lord. And what is constantly being said is what was all already said, do not follow the customs of catching animals to serve idols and drinking the blood as well as having incest. Do not have sexual relations with a woman during her menstruation. Do not have sexual relations with a neighbor's wife. Do not give the children to Molech, making them pass through fire. Do not have sexual relations with the same sex. Do not have sexual relations with the beast and not to defile oneself with these. Because the nations that God has wiped out defile themselves with these, and because their land had been polluted and threw them out. If the Israelites do this, the land will also throw the Israelites. God's people must live the life of God's people, because God is now their God. Be holy, your God is holy. God said to Moses again, Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Do not commit crimes of incest like the Gentiles. Fear the parents. Keep the Sabbath. Do not turn to other gods and other vain things. When offering a fellowship offering to God, offer it so he can receive it with joy. When eating a fellowship offering, eat it within a certain period. When harvesting grain, even when picking the fruit of the vineyard, leave some for the poor and the foreigners. Do not steal. Do not deceive, do not lie, do not swear falsely by God's name. Do not defraud or rob the neighbors. Give the wages of the workers on time. Do not be mean to the disabled. Be fair in justice. Do not slander, do not murder for profit. Rebuke your brothers, but do not hate them with your hearts. Do not revenge the enemies or bear a grudge among your brothers. And love your neighbor as yourself. Do not mate different kinds of animals. Plant the field with 
two kinds of seed and wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. There is ordinance for sleeping with a married woman. And when they enter Canaan and plant a variety of fruit trees, it is considered uncircumcised for three years and cannot be eaten. And in the fourth year, all the fruits should be offered to God to praise Him. And from the fifth year, the fruits can be eaten. Do not eat anything with blood. Practice divination or seek omens. Do not cut the hair at the sides of the head or clip off the edges of the beard. Do not tattoo because of the dead. Do not make your daughter a prostitute. Keep God's Sabbath day. Honor the sanctuary. Do not believe in mediums or seek out spiritists and be defiled by them. Respect the elderly and revere God. Do not mistreat foreigners residing with you and treat them as a native born. Do not use dishonesty at courts or when marrying, but use honest weights and honest ephahs and honest hands. God tells God's people not to follow the customs of the Gentiles, but to obey all the decrees and laws of God. Now all living standards are God and words God gave. This is because the holy God became their God. I am the Lord your God, who has distinguished you from all nations. God spoke of the land of Canaan from the time of Abraham and from Moses about the land flowing with milk and honey. And now he said again that he would give the land of Canaan with the milk and honey flowed, and that God has distinguished the Israelites for this. Therefore the actions of God's people should not be same as those who serve the foreign gods and their bodies are not to be defiled. The reason God's people are to be holy is because God who made them God's people is holy and the holy God distinguished them among all other nations to make the Israelites his possession. I am the Lord who makes them holy. God tells Moses the ordinances priests must obey. Priests are like the adults of the people. So even if the dead are his family, they cannot be defiled by touching them. And because the priests offer the food offerings to God, they cannot cut their hair or beard. They must not profane the name of their God and must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorced. And the woman he marries must be a virgin. Even if she is the daughter of a priest, she must be burned if she commits adultery because she disgraced her father. In particular, the high priest who had the anointing oil poured on his head must not let his hair become unkempt or tear his clothes and go near a dead body, even if they are his parents. And when he has the anointing oil on his head, he must not come out of the sanctuary. None of Aaron's descendants with a defect may come near to offer the food of God or present food offerings to the Lord. And they can eat God's food, but he cannot enter the Curtain. Leprosy patients or patients with bodily discharge cannot eat the sacred food until they are clean and anyone who touches something that can defile him is unclean until the evening and cannot eat the sacred food. And they can eat the holy food after the sun has been set. They should not eat dead bodies or animals torn by wild animals because God is holy. Those who attend the tabernacle of God must also be holy. In addition, God talks about the ordinance for the priest to eat holy food and the ordinance to give offerings to God along with burnt offering. But we must not forget that it should be given in a way that it can be accepted. God repeatedly says, Keep my commands and follow them. I am the Lord who made you holy and who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. The story of God's zeal that said to no longer live as a child with no parents but accept God as the Father and live like God's people as God's people continues.